finally, money, business, business and money talks. Roll it, Mona. And I'm like, come on through, cook. Yeah. I want to put my soap on. That's basically it. Let's talk about drag and all its forms. Hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on the video. This is my review for Love & Hip Hop Miami. This is season two, episode five, and as I said, business and money and let's talk. Again, I always say this, this is the thing, I love the show. I love the show, but I always have an interest in the money part of it, in the business side of it, and we don't get to see that much, but we got to see some of the business stuff this time they're they're doing a good job of showing some of that here in miami so let's get to it okay so first things first we see trick michelle pooch and veronica vega they actually went to a cypher and uh trick was there and he was actually dropping some knowledge and some words of wisdom on the kids that were actually there at the cypher everybody seemed to be really having a good time it looked like a good time um Veronica Vega kind of was going over a little thing like I've gotten off track I haven't been doing anything nobody's been seeing me um, and Trick invited her to come to do a podcast with him called Trick Champs and he said you know when you're there you could be you you can say what you want to say it's it's open like that it's really you know it's that kind of forum so you don't have to really get out there and really really be watching your step and watching what you say She's like, cool, no problem. So they actually did go. Um, later in the program, we actually seen them. They brought up some different things with Veronica. They were glad to see her. They're like, yeah, what's up? Where's the music? You notice that the other way and see the music? She's like, well, I got off to a bad start. It was a lot of negativity. It's that thing and the other. The uh, subject of Amara Lenegra came up. She's like, you know, we had a little altercation. I don't know if we'll ever actually fix it, but we did. And it led from that, and then they went into the whole thing about her song. And there was a big thing with Veronica saying the N-word in her song. And it did. It caused a large controversy. Um, <clears throat> we got down into the whole thing of, like, girl, what are you? Are you Puerto Rican? You're Dominican? You white, you black, what girl, what are you? She's like, I'm black, you know? And it just it just became a whole issue. And when it comes to Veronica, it, I don't even know Veronica's songs. I mean, it, all you know Veronica for is the black versus white issue and the Amara Ladegra thing. So that was a whole mess. Um, some of the guys were there, they were like, listen, I'm Dominican. We got folks that are as dark as trick and as light as Veronica. It is what it is, but you have to be sensible about what you look like and what it is that you say. You have to be sensible about what you're saying. Some things you just can't say. Some people are going to take offense to it, and that's all there's to it. And that is the truth. That is the truth. It is never going to be a good idea for Veronica Vega to be dropping the N-word. It just is not. It's not. I mean, you're literally, you're sitting here, you look like a blonde hair, blue-eyed white woman. It just is not, girl, I don't care what your background is. From what your actual looks are, you just can't. You have to find something else to say. That, that's just the way it is. It's, is it right? No, it probably isn't right. But it is what it is. Okay, and I ain't buying all into the I'm black either because, I, again, I believe that if, you know, two years prior to that, if somebody would have asked her, was she black, she probably would have cussed them out. But anyway, I ain't even getting into that. Let's move on. Okay, so um, Amara Lanegra and her mom and Julian went down and they actually had this meeting Amara has set up with the Sugar Factory. And they actually were proposing a business deal 
with Amar's mom to do her empanadas and have them feature in her store. And um, this is basically Amar yanking her mother out of that job that she actually is working into another more ideal situation. She'll make more money. Um, the work is not going to be as hard, you know, and that whole thing. <clears throat> and her mother was sitting there like, well, I don't know. And I got to think about it. I was like, girl, hush up, Patty. But she ended up asking uh, Julian, you know, Julian was like, no, this is a good business deal. It is good business. It does make sense. Yeah, you want to do this. And she was, you know, really trusted of Julian. And she's like, okay, cool, no problem. In the midst of that, they had a conversation about the whole thing with Jesse Wu. And they were kind of, Amar was bringing them up to speed on what had actually been happening. Julian didn't really say much, so I'm kind of like sad eyed and Julian just kind of looking at him because he was just kind of unbothered. Because you're being accused of something like literally stealing from one artist of yours and giving to another artist. That's not a good look. But he seemed very unbothered, and I was just like, Maybe he's just cool like that. You know, I think he's real, real cute. He's a cute little something, honey. And later on, we seen him in this black outfit, these black slacks, and this black shirt, and this little black belt. I was looking at him, and I just looked at his physique, and I was like, that Julian's kind of cute, honey. I think you probably do get over with telling people any old goddamn thing with your cute ass. But whatever. Something in my spirit tell me don't trust Julian. But, okay. So... They talked about having this meeting, meeting up with Jesse. And um, when the subject of Jesse came up and the throwing of the bottle and all of this stuff, Amara's mother told her to whoop Jesse's ass. Flat out, point blank, period. If shit pops off again, whip her ass. Whoop that bitch's ass. Is basically what Amara's mother said. I said, oh. Well, okay, and Amar was like, oh, so I have your permission? Well, that's it. When I see her, it's on. I said, Amar, now, uh, girl, you ain't about that life. Now, your mother looked like she probably good to scrap and she ain't got much to lose. But, girl, you, you ain't about that life. But anyway, we'll talk about that later. Moving on. Bobby Lights meets with his mother. His mother came to town. So we got to meet Mama Lights, okay? Um... And they had some little words back and forth because his mom and his and his immediate family, his sisters and brothers and all that, they live in North Carolina. So she had just flown back in town. And he was discussing everything that was going on. And his mother told him, stick with Trina. Trina has the groundwork. She has the proof of what it is she could do and what she's done. Stick with Trina. And he told her, you know, but I have this other outfit that is really ready to go and Trina's kind of dragging her heels when it comes to me. His mother, after she listened to that, she said, oh, okay, so she kind of, I think she was really considering both sides. She still was leaning to Trina's family, stick with family, and um, then she says, have a meeting. Have a meeting with her. Sit down and really talk to her. Tell her how you're feeling about the, the holdup and what's going on and all of that. So I'm here for that. I'm here for that. See, I, I see both sides. And the history with him and Trina, I don't trust that Trina will ever actually sign Bobby. This whole thing, you know, it's like the puppy dog and the dangling carrot effect, and I don't like it. I don't like it. I, I just, I still... Don't like how Trina handles Bobby. I don't like it. It's it's like it's a constant kiss my ass thing, and I just ain't really down with it. But I, I don't know. So I'm like, okay. But I definitely think he needs to bring it up to her and let her know that you're not the only outfit in town. Somebody is actually interested in me, and then you can kind of really gauge where her head is. You know what I mean? From a business standpoint, and whatever is this other shit that she's doing. But anyway, so that was that. So, a little bit after this, we see Big Blue and Baby Blue. Yes, the infamous daddy of Pretty Ricky. Immediately, I don't trust him. I don't trust him. I can't tell y'all why, but he just looked like a goddamn street swindler. Um, Something about him don't sit right with me. I, I just, uh, I wouldn't trust him with a $5 bill that belonged to me. 
he looks like he could very well have a little storefront church somewhere. I, I just don't. Mm -mm. Mm -mm, sorry. Nope. I, 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 mm -mm. Little Daddy Ricky, I can't, I can't. And y'all know I really don't feel Baby Blue either. And ba I see the, the swindle, but I said, mm -mm, I don't, neither one of these two. He's the, Big, Big Blue is the tall version and Baby Blue is the short version. And I don't like none of it. But anyway, moving on. Um, he, oh yeah, because he says, well, he invited the dad to the meeting, to the, 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 the next pretty Ricky meeting. So, yeah, we can get this all back on track. And there's still a question about money and people trusted him and he's real dismissive about the situation. Don't trust him. Anyway, moving on. So we see Pooch, Jesse Wu, and Tip. They're over at, at Pooch's nail salon. And they're talking. And we found out that Julian is actually managing Pooch as well. Pooch hasn't had any bad experiences with Julian. Um... But now she got it on her head, like, to watch him, you know. She says, sounds like he's been a lot of best. Like, this is not the first that she's actually heard of Julian being all over the place. But she hasn't had any problem with him. Um, at that time, Jesse Wu invites Miami Tip to come to the meeting that she's actually going to have with Julian and Amara Allegra later on to try to clear up their business stuff and, and, and deal with the allegations of him stealing her idea and all of that. And um, Tip is like down with it. Like, yeah, girl, yeah. And I was like, Tip, you messy. Tip is giving me very much Sheree Whitfield vibes. You know, she's just, just don't really have a storyline of her own, but just clinging on to some of everybody else's mess on the end. Playing friend. Uh, I'm watching you, Tip. I got my eye on you, girl. Anyway. She's did nothing really sideways just yet, but she's a little instigator. But anyway, so then we see this this meeting I was waiting on, JoJo and Pleasure. Baby, that Pleasure is just too much. Somebody told Pleasure that, baby, when you walk down the street, it's like Odell Beckham Jr. went down the street. And, honey, they have lied to you. Trust me when I tell you they have lied to your ass. Baby, it is really not that moist for you. With nobody but Shay. Shay is in love with you. Shay thinks you're the best thing to slice. Brent, the two of y'all together it, and throw the whole bitch away, honey. I don't know what somebody told him, honey, but he thinks he is the end-all, be-all. You hear me? He really do. He thinks he's the hounds of paws, honey. I said, mm, okay, honey. All right. So he sat in there, and JoJo came in there. First of all, she actually had a nice dress on, a dress that actually fit. It wasn't clinging all hard to her or nothing. She actually looked nice. But baby, when I tell you, this fat fuck sat in there and talked to her like she wasn't shit. He was just as arrogant. He was just as dismissive and disrespectful and asking her, you know, she's like, I ain't trying to really argue with you or nothing like that. I just had questions like, why you consoled her? You wasn't worried about me. And he told her, you misrepresented yourself. I mean, he was just, he basically treated her like she wasn't shit. And, I mean, there was really no question about what part you played. Baby, he been fucking you, and thanks for the booty, and I don't really care. Then told her, um, well, go ahead on then. Just go on. Bye. Get out. I was like, girl, you look crazy right now. Got you looking so crazy right now. Mm-hmm. You, Jojo, crazy. You've been around town arguing, been around town arguing and fighting, honey, for no reason. <laughs> he turned around and then threw your pussy back in your face. I said, oh, that's horrible. He really did you. I said, girl, it's poor thing. Mm, mm, mm. Girl, swipe left on that mother, honey. I said, that's terrible. She just walked out of there all defeated, had her feet all hurting and pimping. I said, girl, oh well. See you, girl. See you, Miss JoJo. Oh. Anyway, moving on. Bobby sits down with Trina. They're actually looking at a rough cut of his video. He said it looked cute and everything like that. Um, he actually had asked her, would she actually do a cameo? He asked her that day, and she played him. 
But she said yes. And then he asked her about doing a feature with him. And she said yes. But again, through the conversation, it was like this whole ass kissing match. Oh, would you please? Oh, could you please? Yeah, okay, fine. Sit down, sit down. You know, and it's this whole thing. You know, it's still that thing of he's extra and, you know, all that. I, I still, the vibe, I just, I can't with her vibe. It's so phony when it comes to him. I was like, oh, Bobby, I can't. But anyway, then later on, here comes Shay. Shay comes in. Trina's very irritated with the fact that Shay was coming to the meeting. And then everything goes back to, I don't know whether I should be thinking all sad of him or not. Why is Shay at this meeting? Well, Shay was actually in the video. But anyway, you know, I guess we just forgot all about that. They're not just first. She was in the video, so she came to see the screening too, I guess. Whatever, however. Him and Shay get to talking. Um, Shay says again to him, at least tell Trina what you got going on before you make a decision. He's like, all right. Then she puts out there, you know, I'm coming for JoJo. You know, she's she is literally clinging on to everything that Pleasure P had told her, like a fucking idiot little ugly. You are just stupid. And he's just, I'm just playing you, girl. Don't care nothing about you. Just all caters to his little fat ego. I said, okay, so she said she's coming for JoJo. I was like, girl, I hope JoJo snaps back to being the old JoJo and doesn't even really entertain the shit with Shay and squashes it because what are y'all even fighting about? Because, child, other than you threw that shit. Now, she did throw that shit on her, JoJo, so you might have to pay for that. But other than that, the man, JoJo's lost. But you haven't won. See, that's the bad part. JoJo has lost, but you haven't won. That's the bullshit. But anyway, moving on. Um, Amara, Julian, Jesse, and Tip actually go ahead and they have this whole thing. Julian's just kind of sitting there again. I was telling you, Julian's... It was like a bit of passive aggression. He kind of just denounced what... Jesse Wu was saying, denounced her feelings about the whole situation. And uh, it was for, pretty much, you know, and he said it later, but it was kind of like this thing of like, well, Amara's everything, and Jesse, you ain't shit. You just trying to do something, but she already got it going on. So why I got to steal from, from you for her, but it appears that you did, but whatever. So he kind of dismissed Jesse and was like, you know, they're going to go their separate ways. Sorry it ain't work out. It was real passive aggressive. I said, oh my. So Jesse's like, okay. So Jesse and Amara are kind of like trying to sift through their little stuff. And Amara was kind of on one. She was on one. She was kind of, her attitude wasn't really, you know, she had a battery in her back, basically. And Jesse ain't no punk bitch, so Jesse pretty much had told her, you know, girl, I, I'm not really trying to apologize about throwing the bottle at you and hitting the bottle. Your girlfriend, which is a pit bull that you should tame before you bring out, you need to train her. She threw something at me. So once she did that, baby, I'm not really worried about none of y'all. Any of y'all could get at your mama included. I said, oh, damn, Jesse. And Amara's face turned and said, wait, pardon me, what did you say, honey? She said, I said, your mother could get it too, honey. I said, oh, Jesse. And Amara's like, oh. She said, because, yeah, I heard you been running around town telling people you was going to beat my ass, honey. So beat my ass. I said, Lord. And then it was just this whole big fake thing. Because, again, Amara, you're across the stage. You ain't trying to get it with Jesse for real. You don't want none of that work. You ain't, ain't even ain't got that life. And then I'm going to say this about Jesse. I like Jesse Wood. But Jesse Wu, I think you're a good shit talker and you ain't really about that life either. Because I'm looking in Jesse Wu's face and I'm going to put this out here and some folks probably going to be mad with me but that's alright, I don't care. I'm, I'm, I'm tough. I could take it. I'm going to say that Jesse Wu is a good shit talker and she ain't about that life. She really don't want to do the fighting because I think Jesse's face is worth a million bucks. And I don't think Jesse really want to go toe-to-toe, blow-to-blow -to -blow with nobody. Because I believe she got a lot of work all in here. All in her T-zone, honey. All in here. I believe she got her cheeks done. 
I believe. Well, then I'm gonna take that back. Not so much her cheeks. I believe Jesse got her nose completely reconstructed. We saw. Let's just go back uh, like two episodes ago. We saw Jesse Wu's sister. Jesse Wu and her sister look exactly alike, except for that fist in the middle of Jesse Wu's sister's face. Jesse has a completely different nose than her mother and her sister. She has a very much a trans woman's nose. And yeah, I said it. I said it. I could be wrong. But in this case, I just don't think that I am. I look at Jesse's face and I see a lot of pretty trans women. She has the same look as a lot of girls in Atlanta who's completely reconstructed and that bitch don't really want to go to no sparring match with nobody. Because you don't want that work rearranged. I believe if Jesse, got, child, Jesse could probably, one payment off the one of that piece of what she probably got done in her face, she could have paid for that record. And I'm just going to put that out there. Y'all let me know what y'all think. You can, I mean, and I could take it. It don't make no difference what the comment is. If you get mad at me, I'm all right, baby. I can, it, it'll work. It'll work. If my frame can hold it. But this is what I think. I believe Jesse. Got a, and I'm not just saying a little nose job. I'm talking a full con reconstruct of her nose. All this in here. That's that's my belief. I believe she changed her her complete look because her sister definitely got a fist in the, in the middle of her face, and so do her mama. So, and I know because I'm a fist holder of my own. You know, it is what it is. So that's that. Okay, so let's move on because I know them comments is gonna be a mess, honey. Okay, so Bobby, Bobby, Bobby signed with Clear Vision Music Group. And I don't know how it's going to work out, but you know what? I'm all, I'm a gambler. I'm all for a gamble. And um, I hope it works out for my Bobby. I really do. I really do. I hope it really works out for Bobby. Um, I'm here for it. It is what it is. And uh, he seemed so very happy. I love the little outfit he had on that black and white leather baby with them fringes were sharp. But um, I was really happy for him. And they seemed very excited for him, the company they put on a big to-do. And I was happy for Bobby. It is what it is. I think, I think Trina has lost out. We will see going forward whether this blows up in Trina's face. Because the way Trina's attitude is about Bobby... She basically shouldn't even give a fuck. And just be like, oh, okay, no problem. He went on a side with somebody else. And, you know, naturally, whatever business they were doing together, like, she probably won't let him open up for her anymore. But there shouldn't be any animosity. It should just be what it is, and it is what it is. And that'll be that. And she'll say, he's stupid. I could have took you there. Uh, we'll go on it and see what you can do. That's how the attitude should be. We'll see what happens going forward. Y'all tell me, do y'all think Bobby made a good decision or do y'all think Bobby made a bad decision? Leave it in the comments. Okay, moving on. Last thing we're going to talk about, Puerto Ricky. Oh, Puerto Ricky. I messed. The whole family got together, baby. Woo! The whole family, big blue, little blue, spectacular, the little junky one. Yeah, allegedly. Because I swear that little child is on drugs. Um, yeah, they all was there, baby. All in the room. And the tension was as thick as my ass, honey. I said, oh, let's go. So they get to talking. And they're going on about what they need and and this guy, kind of thing. And, and bringing him back into the fold. And baby, the first, for the first time, a little one that's usually a little space cadet was like, mm -mm, I don't know all about you being back up into it because I struggle every day and I think my struggle has a lot to do with mistakes you made in the past. I was like, oh shit. And baby, the daddy got all up in his feelings. I said, mm, curbside preacher, honey. Curbside preacher, baby. He ain't liking this. And then Spectacular took it up 
from there. And then, honey, that little short blue, honey, got to carrying on. And you have some respect for your father. And this, that, thing, that, baby, and this spectacular story is spilling the tea. And saying about all the work they did and all the hits they did and all of this. And where in the hell was the damn money? I said, oh, see, I knew it was some shit. And, they, and the father kind of didn't argue with that he misappropriated some funds. But then his two went into this, tell me, what, what, what money do you think you should have had? And I said, oh, Lord, are you telling me this bastard that spent their money and then got it on them like he didn't owe them nothing? Like they was working for him, working to take care of him, like they owed him something because he was their daddy? I said, see, I knew that's kind of the feeling that guy. I knew he wasn't right. I knew he wasn't right. And he really do like that one that's named after that little baby blue. I said, see, you probably got a better deal than the rest of them. And then I noticed something else. Now they talk about Spectacular. Spectacular is literally rich at this point, And he's the only one. But it came from his business sense and him doing things that he was trained to do. And I sensed a huge bit of jealousy from both of the blues. And they are like one, like one person speaking out of two bodies. A short one and a tall one. And I think they're very envious and jealous of Spec. And they were talking about all of this about uh, Facebook and how you think you're supposed to take all the money from Facebook. But I have to say, quite honestly, back in the day of, of Facebook and all of this, the only person that I used to see, I never saw any of the other members of Pretty Ricky doing anything when it came to social media whose ass was always on display, displaying their ass and their little genitalia and showing his body was always spectacular. Spectacular. Spectacular was the one I saw bearing his soul and thirst trapping and carrying on. Y'all remember, he was thirst trapping his ass off and dancing all nasty and showing all his shit and carrying on. And he built up their, this is the understanding I got. He built their social media to like 7 million. And then he went on and he started his business and his social media attraction just Blew his business up. Baby, that ain't got nothing to do with uh, Pretty Ricky. That ain't got nothing to do with Pretty Ricky because uh, from the door, baby little blue, baby blue, I don't think you got what Spectacular got to be able to show off to get 7 million people to actually pay attention. We already know as far as the frame goes, you don't. And all the thirst trapping, baby, you couldn't, child, we be five miles to empty. Fuck it with you. And Pleasure, Pleasure got the voice. So Pleasure was able to do other stuff, but wasn't, there was 7 million folks following him. That voice wasn't going to get him with that body, got that other one. I think that everything spectacular got, he got on his own accord, whether it was... You know, however you, you do, you work with your mama gave you. Hey, work with your mama gave you. And I believe he worked with his mother gave him. And you bastards are jealous. You're jealous. And you better do like your baby blue. Do like your daddy. Get you a damn corner side church and get the swindling and scam and shit. But this is what I read from the situation. Baby, it was getting that Gary go down. I looked at Spectacular. Spectacular had that had enough. And he told baby blue, he said, listen, what? you need to stop all this hollering. You know, I've been letting you get away with it. But you know, you do realize that one day I will bust your ass. You, you, you know that I could bust your ass, right? I let you do all that, but you know I'll whoop your ass. Honey, and that damn baby blue was saying, he said, okay, that's enough. Get up. Come on outside. I'm going to whoop your ass today. I said, oh, damn, honey. And then you're really starting to see the family dynamic. I really believe, and that's a shame that I really believe that Spectacular will really whoop Baby Blue's ass. I think Baby Blue is a big punk, actually, personally. I really do. I think he's a little get dressed up, loud mouth, little nothing. And I just, Lord have mercy, poor child. I think Little Speck was going to really tag the shit out of him. And I think they all do it, honey. I got real tickled myself. But anyway, I can't wait till next week to see how all this shit turn out. But that daddy is bad news, honey. Y'all take and run away from your daddy. Your daddy is, mm-mm, mm-mm. I ain't feeling 
candy store preacher. I ain't feeling him at all. All right, I'll talk to y'all later.